Hey everyone, and welcome. If you're just starting to code, you are about to meet one of the most important ideas in all of programming. Seriously, it's everywhere. It's a core building block for pretty much any app you can think of. So today, we're diving deep into the world of arrays. Yeah, you've probably heard this word array thrown around a lot, right? But what does it actually mean? What is this thing that's so fundamental to coding? Okay, so at its heart, an array is really just a list, a collection of things. It could be a list of numbers, a bunch of names, a series of temperatures from a sensor. The absolute key, though, is that all the values have to be the same type of thing. All right, to really get this, let's use an analogy you won't forget. Just picture a row of mailboxes or maybe some storage lockers all lined up perfectly next to each other. Each box can hold one item, and crucially, each box has a number on it so you know exactly where to find things. That, my friends, is basically an array. Now, let's see how that idea looks in actual code. See this line? We're creating an array for integers. We're calling it numbers, and we're immediately putting four things into our four boxes, 10, 20, 30, and 40. It's as simple as that. And this table? It's the perfect picture of our row of boxes. The index is just the number on the front of the box, and the value is whatever we stored inside. So box number zero has the value 10. Box one has 20, and it just keeps going. Okay, stop everything. This is maybe the single most important rule you'll learn about arrays, and it trips up almost every beginner. In programming, we start counting from zero. The first box is index zero, not one. The second box is index one. Seriously, tattoo this on your brain. Counting in programming starts at zero. All right, so we've got our stuff in the boxes. Cool, but how do we get it out again? How do we actually peek inside a specific box to see what's there? It's actually super easy. You just call the array by its name, in this case numbers, and then in square brackets, you put the number of the box you wanna look in. So numbers, square brackets two, is literally telling the computer, hey, go to that numbers array and tell me what's in box number two. And there it is, 30. Makes perfect sense, right? We look back at our chart and, yep, the value at index two is in fact 30. It just works. Okay, so we can read from a box. What's the next logical question? Of course, what if we want to change what's in the box? Maybe a player's score needs updating or we need to change a setting. You're gonna love this. It's just as simple as reading. You point to the box you wanna change. Here it's index one and you just use the equal sign to assign a brand new value. So we're saying, hey computer, go to the numbers array, find box number one and stick the number 99 in there. And take a look, this is what our array looks like now. Remember it was 10, 20, 30, 40? Well, the value at index one, the second box, is now 99. It worked perfectly. But what if you know you're going to need, say, five boxes for something, but you don't actually know what you're gonna put in them yet? No problem. This line of code creates an integer array called grades and just reserves five empty spots all ready for you to fill up later. So you might be wondering, what's inside these so-called empty boxes when we create them? For number-based arrays, the computer is helpful and just fills them all with a default value, which is zero. It's like having five clean slates ready for data. And here's a super useful trick. What if you forget how many boxes your array has? You can just ask it. Using something like grades.length will tell you the size. In this case, it would spit back the number five. This is huge, and you're about to see exactly why. All right, this is all cool for keeping things organized. But now, now we get to the real superpower of arrays. This is where they go from nice to have to absolutely essential. I'm talking about combining them with loops. This is the basic game plan for how a loop works with an array. It's really just a simple set of instructions that repeats. You start at the beginning, at index zero, you do something with the item in that box. Then you move to the next box, index one, and do it again. And you just keep going until you run out of boxes. And look at this, this is what you get. With just a tiny bit of code to set up the loop, we can go through every single item in the array and do something with it. Imagine if you had a thousand items. A loop does all the hard work for you. It's an absolute game changer. So at this point, you might be thinking, okay, I get it, but why all this trouble? Why can't I just make a bunch of separate variables for my numbers? And you know what? That's a totally fair question. Well, I think this comparison says it all. Look at the left, three numbers, three lines of code. Now look at the right, one clean, simple line. 
Now just imagine you had 100 numbers. The version on the left becomes an absolute mess, while the array on the right stays elegant and simple. So let's just hammer home the main advantages here. Your code is way shorter, it's so much more organized, you can store tons of similar things together, and, the big one, you can process all of them super easily with loops. It really saves you from the nightmare of creating variable after variable after variable. All right, here is your official array cheat sheet. If you're gonna remember anything, remember this. The data type has to be the same for everything inside. The index, the box number, always starts at zero. You can always find out the size using dot length. And arrays and loops, they're best friends. So there you have it. The what, the why, and the how of arrays. They really are the bedrock for handling any kind of list of data in programming. So the real question I have for you is, now that you know this, where are you gonna use them? Think about it, a list of high scores in a game you're building, a playlist of songs, the items in an online shopping cart, the possibilities, they're literally endless.